whether it be via email, Instagram DMs, or YouTube comments, I am always asked the same question. How do I achieve soft, smooth black and gray? How do I get those crispy transitions in my blends? Now, now I did a video uh, quite a while back now of tips and tricks to achieve, you know, super soft shading, but I realized I never actually went in to techniques used and hand speed and stuff like that. So that is what this video is going to be. The ultimate guide on tattoo shading. Let's go. Now for the demonstration, I did use practice skin. Now it wasn't any like branded practice skin or anything like that. It was just generic Amazon practice skin. It wasn't anything special. I used a Bishop wand shader and I ran that shader at nine volts for everything in this video, apart from the round shader, which it got turned down to 8.5. So there are three different types of techniques. You have a pendulum technique, you have a pull technique, and you have a push technique. Now, some artists do like to use a fourth technique, which is like a round circular motion. However, I do not believe that this gives you the smoothest, softest shade. So we're not going to talk about that one. Now, most black and gray pieces will consist of all three of the techniques mentioned. So firstly, let's break down what the pendulum technique is. Now the pendulum technique is a technique where you go back and forth in a back and forth motion. And as you can see, I am pivoting on my little finger. Now pivoting on my little finger, what that allows me to do is stabilize my hand, but it also gives me enough movement in the wrist to perform the technique effectively. For me, the pendulum motion is the technique that I have used probably 60 to 70% of the entire tattoo that I do. I would go as far as saying that most artists are using this technique to achieve their smooth black and gray. Whether you are using a small mag or a big mag, it is all the same. The pendulum motion, just back and forth. Now you would generally use this technique when you are working on larger areas, when you are working in between those spaces on that stencil, and when you are just generally getting those tones in plus any saturation. Now we have a pull technique. Now this pull technique is what I use to shade up to lines. Say that I have a side of a cheek on a portrait, for example, and I need to work up to the edge of that cheek and there's no harsh line and there's no background or anything like that. This is the technique that I am using. I am working from the line of that cheek and working in. This gives me a nice, crispy, clean finish. So anytime I am working up to lines, this is the technique that I am using. And then finally, we have the push technique. Now this is used to get nice blends in your tone, going from one blend to the next. However, this is in combination with the other techniques, primarily the pendulum motion. Now you can also use this technique and some people will call it whip shading and a lot of guys in the traditional like sector of tattooing will use 
this type of shading quite a lot, but it is also good for realism and achieving that smooth black and grey. Now, a lot of artists, especially beginning artists, tend to think that you can only shade with mags. However, take a look at this. Here I am shading with a liner. As you can see, you can shade with a liner, no problem. So when would you use a liner to shade? Personally, a liner can be used to get into those nice tight areas. If you have a nice tight corner that you need to get into or a nice corner that you need to sharpen up, a liner is great for that. I will also use a liner again to, let's go back to that cheek, to crispen that line up even more after I've done the, the, the pull technique on that cheek. If I'm still not happy with it, I will use a liner pendulum motion to go around just to clean it up even more. So liners to shade, you can do it. Do not be afraid to not try it because they are an absolute godsend. And then finally, we have round shaders. Now the round shader that I'm using in this is a 11 round shader, 0.25. Now, as you can see, shading with a round shader, it's relatively easy. I am still, whether I am using a round shader or a liner using the pendulum motion, but all techniques mentioned will work with the liner and the round shader also. Now, when it comes to round shaders, as mentioned, I am bringing that voltage down to 8.5. For me, it just works better with round shaders bringing that voltage down. Because the needles are so like tightly packed together, sometimes if your voltage is the same as your mags it can pack it in a little bit too much so i like to bring it down just a little bit to achieve the same results but in the areas what call for a round shader now it's important for you to know that during every single one of the techniques mentioned i am nice and light. I am seriously letting the machine do the work and my hand is just guiding it. That is it. Some artists, especially beginner artists, tend to not let their machine do the work for them and then this is when overworking comes into play. While you keep your hand nice and light and you let your machine do the work, that gives you a lot, lot more time on the skin to build those tones up. So you've mastered the techniques, but you still can't quite get your blends how you want them. Well, the biggest tip that I could give you for those smooth transitions in your blends would be to start out light. Start with your lightest wash and work through your washes until you get the desired transition from dark to light. You can also use bigger mags. I would say anything upwards of 13 is going to serve you the best if you are struggling with anything lower. What I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna leave you with some real time footage of me shading in a really, really shoddy circle. But this isn't about the perfect circle. This is just so you can see 
a real-time buildup of tone, those real-time techniques being put into practice, and you also get to see my hand speed. If you have learned anything from this video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Do not forget to like this video, drop a comment, let's discuss, discuss with each other, and, and I shall see you all in the next video. Enjoy the shoddy circle. Peace out, guys.